All right, it's recording again. Chandra Kalanadi, fantastic. So, when um, I was introduced to the principles I'm going to share now, I was quite thrilled because up until now, I have been uh, speaking on Navamsha as an individual child. All right? And the real use of Jyotish is not where you are having one bucket, you put one information in, another bucket, you put another, or box, if you will. It is combining the information to get the full picture. All right? And we learn that from the Nadis. In fact, in the beginning, we understand that Jyotish was not written down in what we call Hora Shastra. Okay? It was all Nadi Shastra. And Shastra is not an appropriate word for Nadi. Because Nadi was just river. Nadi means river. Which means there's just a flow of information given. Flow. Continuous flow. And then you get all the results. In essence, it says, if this is there, this is there, this is there. And then it just talks on for hours, hours. Okay, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. And you don't know the principle. All right? Just small things that you ever told. For example, here is it's told here. In Chandra Kalanadi or Deva Kerala, we have the results for our Nadi Amsa called Mudgara. Okay? Mudgara. Sometimes it's written as Mudgala. Okay? It means, Svocham She Tauli Ge Bhaume. Tora Graha Samanvite. Vitone Lagna Jatas Cha. Chora Paha. Sorry. All right. Now, what is this shloka saying? If I translate it literally, if in an exalted or own namamsha, so we will now most times when this is written, it means exalted namamsha. Okay? Taulige, Libra, Bhaume. So how can Libra be exalted namamsha? Oh no. Taulige means Libra and Rashicha, exalted namamsha. Okay? So this is Mars placed in Libra in the Rashi chart and in Capricorn Navamsha. Chora Graha Samanvite. Now, Chora Graha Samanvite means that you're joined the Graha, which is a thief. Okay? Chora Graha. Who's the Chora Graha? He's the thief Graha. Okay? This can mean two things. Either it's joined Saturn or joined Sixth Lord. All right? One of the two. Mitone Lagna Jatas Cha. So the Lagna should be Gemini. So this is a Rashi chart. Chorapahrita Vitavan. Okay. Will see loss of wealth because of theft. All right. Now, I've given a loose translation here. But you need to get the whole picture now. Gemini ascendant. Now, I have made a parenthesis here. I'll explain that in a minute. Gemini ascendant, Mars in Libra in the fifth house. That same Mars is in Navamsha in Capricorn. All right? And then we get to know we'll lose their wealth due to thieves. But there is a rider here. The principle is not complete. All right? Or the, 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 the shloka is not complete. The whole section that I was reading where this shloka was given is saying all these results are for when the lagna is in mudgara nadi amsha. So then you have to sit and calculate, okay, put Gemini as the lagna, put the lagna degree in exactly mudgara nadi amsha. All right, then you do the numbers and you see, okay, if I put it in mudgara nadi amsha, here's the lagna, here's the nadi amsha, from lagna to la nadi amsha. Okay, what is the degree of the lagna? And then I know all the lagnas in the, all the 16 divisional charts. Okay? It's a bit of work. But what's happening is, I get to know from this what the Navamsha Lagna is. Because if I know in all the divisional charts, I also know Navamsha Lagna. Right? No. That, so the full is, statement is, Gemini okay. Lagna, Paishi's Navamsha. Mars in Libra and Rashi chart, Mars in Capricorn in Navamsha. Will, will, uh, will associate with thieves and lose their wealth due to thieves. So I have to explain this because this is using Navamsha, right? To explain it. There's something you didn't know. You have to learn that. So we have some interpretation principles. We have to derive all the information from this shloka. 
Well, derived almost all. There are some things I have not so confirmed. Now, associating with thieves. Who is the thief in the chart? Sixth Lord is the thief in the chart, right? Your, the thief is the sixth Lord, okay? So wherever the sixth Lord is, that is what the thief wants to steal. Simple, okay? Simple, simple. And these are actual objects of wealth. They are looking for something, like is there some money here? Is there, a, is there a couch here? Is there a computer here? They're looking. What can I steal? That's where the sixth lord is. Mm -hmm. Now, Mars is the sixth lord for Gemini ascendant or Lagna. And if it is in the fifth house in Libra, it shows that the thieves are one's friends. <laughs> because oh. the fifth house is where you meet the thief. If the sixth lord is in fifth. Okay. All right. Who is in fifth? You meet people who are supporting you, who voted for you, who, uh, who, who vouched for you, you meet your children over there, you meet your students over there, that's where you meet what's in fifth house. So if the sixth one is in fifth house, there one of those people is a thief. Okay? And then I added, let me, be, let me give some goodies here. We may add that because Libra houses the sounds of Ra and Ta, Oda Chakra that the thieves will have first names beginning with these. So if you have, let's say, Sixth Lord in Libra, you know there's a thief whose name is, let's say, Rajan. Okay? Wow. It could be his name is Roger, <laughs> Robert. All right? If it's Ta, Ta means the person could be uh, not Thomas. Thomas is hard Ta. That's Murdanya, right? So it may be something like uh, Tanya. All right? Tanya. I don't know if you use Tanya pronounced like that. Okay. So yes, you know the thief. Regarding this, I wanted to ask you because uh, many times I have seen Indian astrologers debating on these names and aksharas because they say that in India we follow that if this is with this nakshatra, then this name will come. But in the West, they are like, they may not follow for Christians or for Muslims that if you are in this nakshatra, then your name will start with R or T. So even there will this hold true. Oh, this works everywhere. This is karma. All right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Your, your personal name is decided by your Shasti Amsha Lagna. If that does not match the moon sign in Rashi Chat, you don't have the karma to use the moon for your name. Simple. Okay. Even Indians, some Indians don't use this moon for the name. Right? Okay. Many do. Don't. So don't worry about that. That's something else. All right? The moon is, the, is a name which gives good health. Not everybody uses that. To see what people are using, and even in India, some astrologers don't exactly use that. You should see, I have made a lecture on my website on Namakarana. All right? Uh, it's uh, actually on the, on the channel, Visti's channel. It's a Namakarana channel. A brief, it's a part of Deva Guru Brihaspati Center. So there's a YouTube channel for that. I gave, did it some time ago. There's only those two videos, Namakarana, so you can go read that and see that. So there was this, this tidbit, you know, if we know where the sixth lord is, you know what the thief's name is. It's good to know, okay? Now, so all I know now is that if your sixth lord is in fifth house, you'll associate with thieves. Now, we'll lose wealth due to thieves. Because Mars in this principle was in Capricorn and Navamsha. We say, look in the Rashi chart at Capricorn and its opposite sign, Capricorn, Cancer. Which are these houses in the Rashi chart if Gemini is the Lagna? Second and eighth house. The, 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 the association is because of wealth. The thief is associating with you because of wealth. Second and eighth is all wealth. Your wealth, second house, eighth house, other people's wealth. Maybe you're holding other people's wealth. Okay, maybe you're a bank. So you are okay. taking this and applying it to the D1. Fantastic. Yes. So what the association, it's not the intention, but the association with any planet is seen by seeing its Namamsha sign and seeing that and the opposite sign in the Rashi chart from Lagna. That's okay. why the Graha is in your life. Okay. It's not the Gra's intention. Keep that in mind. But it is what is happening in your association. Okay? The Graha may have a different intention, but it, your association is leading to that focus. Okay? So let us say you wanted to know what is going to be the primary association with my kids. Take the fifth lord. 
see it in Navamsha. See what sign that is. See that sign back in the Rashi chart, and you'll know why you're associating with your kids. Fifth your primary Lord, association. Fifth Lord of the Navamsha, we will see, right? Rashi chart. Okay, Rashi chart. Okay. Fifth Lord of Rashi chart. See it in Navamsha. See that sign in Rashi. Why are you talking to each other? Oh, okay. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. What will be your prime conversations with kids? Your prime karma with kids? Okay. So this is only part of the shloka. We're just unearthing little, 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 little bit of it. I just talked about Rashi, then I talked a little bit Navamsha. Let's see a bit more. Lost due to thieves. As Mars is placed in 11th house in Navamsha, it is not in Akendra. Ah. Further, so, so I have to explain this. The statement was Mars is in Capricorn Navamsha. And Pisces is the Navamsha Lagna. So what is happening? You're experiencing 11th house. Okay? So, now what exactly does this mean? And this I'll give the main principle. The placement of a planet from Navamsha Lagna tells us whether you benefit from the Graha or you don't benefit from the Graha. Okay. So the deciding influence is the Navamsha Lagna. It decides, do you benefit or do you not benefit? Obviously, we have 12 houses, so we can see exactly how you benefit or not. All right? So I say here, the 6th and 11th in Navamsha can cause loss and punishment for which Rudra should be worshipped to overcome. Because I told you I'm scared of that 11th house, right? If there's a malefic over there, he is not nice. He will punish. He'll be so critical. He will, make, he will be so critiquing, critiques, critesque. All right? He, he will really be difficult to deal with, that malefic. He will punish. Benefics, a bit better. All right? Nicer. Once growth. And the remedy is Rudra worship to deal with this. Hara and Rudra distinctly. So we have three steps. So let's try and see these steps. See the placement and lordship in the Rashi to know the agenda and event. So this is something you have been learning from the beginning of learning Jyotish. What is the Graha really doing? Okay. What is it doing in my life? Okay. But what it's doing does not tell me whether I benefit from it. Right. What is it doing doesn't tell me necessarily what are the reasons we are talking together is, okay? And that we need some other steps to understand. It also doesn't tell me the intention of the graha. These grahas are like people interacting with us, okay? Some person did something. Why did he do that something? I still have not figured out. Does that, what that person does benefit me? I have not figured out, all right? Okay, what was the association between me and that person which led to that event? I still have not figured out. So Rashi chat is very limited, you see. Okay, and I like that. I like to limit, make boundaries so that in Jyotish I know what I can see and what I cannot see. And then I have to figure out where, where to find out that which I cannot see. Right? So this is what we're doing here. Number one, see the placement and lordship in Rashi, chart D1, to know the agenda and event. This, this can have some very funny connotations. I hope to get to that. Number two, see the placement from the Navamsha Lagna to know whether you benefit or not. Honestly, once you learn this, you start with Navamsha first. <laughs> you say, why do I need to know anything other than whether I benefit or not? That's most important, some people will say. So why not start with Navamsha? Okay. Step three, see the Navamsha placement from the Rashi Lagna to know which objects the association will focus on. So we need some examples, otherwise this is all a puzzle. Okay. This is not easy to understand. And, and I accept it's not one, easy. One thing I wanted to ask, when you say that uh, you see the placement from D9 Lagna, so then you are meaning if it is in the Kendras and Trikonas that that's going to benefit you. Yes. Yes. Let's try. So these are the houses you need to know about in Navamsha. This is traditional Navamsha, Navamsha Bhava. Okay. So this we will teach in the tradition. 
all right and uh, they, uh, this list this 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 chart changes depending on purpose like if this if we are focusing only on marriage this whole chart will be different all right like 11th house is is suddenly priya love in in when we talk about marriage only but when we talk about general results then you need to know these these principles and some of these print these how these houses i have changed the wording slightly from what i have seen in some lists okay so uh, I, but not entirely it's still staying true so, to the principles of the navash it's just that there are about three lists out there for this in our tradition and two of them deal with general use of navamsha um but in these two um i need to point out some factors which are relevant okay